Uh, yes, yeah, yes. So accessibility options are something that I've actually got to get my head around more and work out what's missing in, in Joomla. I've uh, been put into a team that is going to be managing the accessibility project for Google Summer of Code this year um, as a mentor. Um, but at the moment, um, the Joomla accessibility team is in a little bit of uh, restructure. So if anyone wants to join that team, let me know and I can put you in touch. Um, so I'm, I'm keen to find what, um, what Dana has got in her uh, discoveries. And so I'll hand over to you, Dana. Mike. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Well, fine. Can you see me? Yep. All right. All right, so let's, uh, I have a couple of slides to show and then it's mostly just browsing the internet and clicking around. Um, so let me share my screen. All right. So uh, my little presentation is called Accessibility Widgets, but mostly it's just one widget that I will be talking about, um, but it's just uh, widgets. So um, quick word about me. I'm a software engineer, do all things were web, uh, front end, back end, CMS systems and optimization, accessibility, uh, all sorts of stuff. I work with Vladimir at Tomato Elephant Studio, um, doing mostly Drupal right now. Um, so accessibility, if um, that's a little um, acronym for accessibility, just Ali, you can, if you don't wanna type a long word, just shorten it. And uh, what is it? It's um, just to cater for uh, people with all possible issues that they, uh, to bring the accessible web to everyone. So you might have visual, auditory, motor, cognitive, or temporary disabilities. Also, sometimes um, you might actually have technical difficulties. Your mouse is broken or the touchpad is broken, so you cannot navigate with the pointer so why not have a, so that's like technical disability um, or you know when the touch screens uh, in Brisbane we have the go cards when you try to top it up and it's a touch screen and sometimes it's not the, the button is like just big enough for that little place to um, tap and it's just not big enough so here you go they just failed my accessibility test because this touch screens are not that good um, in the train stations. So compliance, uh, that word. So out of the box, most CMS um, websites are not compliant 100%. Um, I just went to joomla.org accessibility statement and just um, ran in a couple of tests. Um, there's just a couple of issues, uh, fairly small, but there are issues. Um, you install any system out of the box. Maybe um, they will be compliant, but no one uses systems out of the box. You need to put content, you need to put styling, you need to put your own uh, third party components on top of it. So straight away, it might not be um, um, accessible. Uh, so there is a quick checklist uh, that um, if you are, um, trying to be compliant um, with accessibility guidelines, uh, you can go through the checklist. It's a big long checklist and um, there are tools to help <laughs> with um, all those things. Um, yeah, but the mostly um, because we, if you're using the CMS, you will be 80% the way there. Um, so 
uh, accessibility testing consists of or can be um, done in three ways. Uh, you have uh, browser widgets, for example, Lighthouse and Chrome. Um, there is out of the box uh, tester in uh, um, Firefox, which is a really good one. It tests JavaScript as well. There are multiple um, widgets there. There is um, software as a service uh, tools, uh, that will scan your whole website and report on every single page, every single alt tag that's missing from every single image. Um, for example, Dynamapper, it's a good one. It creates a really nice report that you can show to your clients and say, hey, we need to work on accessibility um, on your website, but it also only like any um, automated tools with something that's um, created by humans, websites, um, is they're not covering everything, every single checklist on that list. So they will be probably covering about 30% um, of, um, of the actual issues that they can find of, from the checklist. And of course, manual testing. So you go click or tap, tap, tap and see how it behaves and see if you can get to every single link by tabbing around. Um, and so on. And so this is uh, accessibility in uh, uh, compliance in a nutshell. So I found this widget a couple of uh, months ago, which sort of mm. uh, <clears throat> really, really uh, impressed me. Uh, oh, it's <laughs> Um, yeah, so I was on browsing internet on my phone and this thing pop up somewhere. Uh, Cartman's escape room is like, oh, that's cool, but what's this? And it's like, oh, that's really interesting. So what does it do? And um, you can do many different things on it contrast and reset it's like oh that's pretty cool and it's not very offensive looking uh, doesn't impose too much on the website um, so excellent uh, that's how it looks on the desktop as well so i was trying to find what this uh, widget was um, and this website is written in uh, is done in uh, wordpress so this is a specific, specific WordPress uh, widget. So it's sort of uh, like, oh, it doesn't really fit my bill. Um, and I think it was like last updated a couple of years ago on GitLab. So it's not very um, useful, but I kept searching just to see if um, any new uh, widgets came out, especially with, you know, coronavirus and lots of people working from home um you have to make pretty much everything accessible all the shops online shops all the um zoom meeting apparently has a better accessibility than uh google meets for unauthenticated users so yeah we need to include everyone in the um in the internet of uh humans so anyway, so I found this uh, user way uh, uh, company and they provide a widget. Uh, this, uh, there is a free version of the widget and there is a paid version of the widget and they also provide a lot of different services. Um, so they provide the widgets for pretty much everything. It's just a piece of JavaScript that, they, that you can attach to your website. Um, I like, uh, so their features are quite uh, extens extended. So you have all sorts of um, accessibility um, and also they show which accessibility of CAG um, item they will be fixing with this particular item, um, with their particular widget um, functionality. And it also care, caters for um, even dyslexic because um, it 
ch changes the font to a slightly different font that's um, been researched to help up with dyslexia or like other accessible fonts so that people, so these are the three um, uh, tier uh, functions and you have then AI powered functions. So if you do have um, content team who may be a bit um, unaware of accessibility and they put uh, images all around, but they forget to put the alt tags. So this AI will come in and actually insert alt uh, attributes trying to describe the image. It's not going to be a good one, but there will be a description so that you don't leave um, users behind. Um, and also fixing the broken links and auto replace and, um, and so on and so forth. It, it can even translate it for you. So, And the one thing is like, oh, let's check what's the accessibility of uh, accessibility company website. So just from this quick run of um, Lighthouse in, um, um, in Chrome, it's like, oh yeah, not too bad, 100%. So it, Chrome, Chrome tool is not too bad. It shows uh, which uh, test it's doing for you as well. So it's not too many tests either, but it's a start. Um, you can run it on a headless browser as well. So you can incorporate it into your CI CD pipeline so that uh, you can monitor it automatically as well. So, how does it look like? Uh, let's have a look. So, this is one of the um, clients. So it's a New York law school. And in America, actually, once they started, um, once the um, legislation about the accessibility, that accessibility is required on all the websites, um, inaccessible websites and co companies with accessible websites start and started being sued uh, just by general public saying like, oh, your website is not accessible. So it's actually, really, really strict in there. So that's why um, uh, web developers in, in the States have to be really, really careful. So for example, one of the accessibility guidelines items is that you, need, you have to pause animations. Um, so here you go, it just, or um, a quick and easy way to, um, um, to implement that. Uh, also, you've got your maybe not very um, accessible font colors, um, a bit more contrasty. So here we go, very good contrast. Now it's very visible. So you don't have to compromise on, um, like if you like, very pale design style, for example, you can still have it and it's still accessible if you um, bring in this sort of accessibility widget. Uh, or for example, uh, some users might not, um, might need to focus on a specific part of the website. So here it just kind of shows where the mouse is specific um, at this time. So if you have a lot of, um, If you have a lot of text, that's a really good way for, or for example, here's a nicer one. It's a, it's nice a way for a user to follow the text on a, on a website. There's so many different um, little widgets and helpers that can help making your uh, website a bit more accessible. So there's interesting, I was reading um, some court cases or some outcomes of some websites that are using some of those accessibility widgets. And uh, this company is very, very um, proactive. And if, and they're saying that, yes, you are 100% compliant if you're using our 
paid option, of course, and uh, they even will help you with um, um, somewhere if someone is complaining about your website. <laughs> Here you go, provide assistance with demand letters or lawsuits. So this is how, um, um, I guess, very sure they are that uh, the widget is, um, is so good. Um, of course, it doesn't um, replace uh, trying to make your website accessible from uh, day one or from the um, like putting the accessibility into um, into the development workflow uh, but if you get inherited some websites saying hey can you support this and like oh uh, let's make it slightly nicer for our users um, another thing about this um, accessibility um, PR. Yeah, another, uh, another thing about this um, widget is that GDPR um, compliant, so it doesn't leak any data about your users anywhere, so it's not um, the Facebook, it doesn't track anyone, although it does give you um, some sort of analytics on how users use your uh, website and this widget on the website. So also, um, here's the Amnesty International website. They have some special, um, so this is a paid version. You can uh, style it a bit more, removing uh, th um, the logo and things like that. Here's a screen reader as well, so that um, if users don't have, uh, have to, for example, for Amnesty International, especially users might be accessing their website from, um, some undisclosed location or from a jail, from like some um, internet cafe where they need to say, please help me, like I'm trying, I'm being detained or something like that. So um, that's why um, those users might not have actually uh, accessibility tools on their own machine. They might not even have their own machine. So here they can, That that's why it's, um, it's a good idea to have those tools on um, available on the website as well. So for those users who might not have their usual regular uh, machine or setup. So, um, and uh, how can I take it away? So they have a little, um, there we go. So when you um, access their uh, or create a, your, an account um, in the user way, you'll have your little JavaScript that you can just paste into um, your website in the header, in the footer, whatever. So it just builds that little, inserts that little widget with your data account and uh, um, some attributes that you can set. So those attributes is um, um, so it's custom branding. If you um, if you want to purchase it or color of the button on your website and what sort of button do you want to um, gradient backgrounds things like that. Uh, what sort of um, button do you want? Do you want it? Uh, what sort of icon on it and size, big or small? And where on the screen do you want it as well? Um, there's custom triggers. You can have a language um, as well. So if you have a multilingual website, I guess you can um, make that uh, dynamic as well so that uh, your accessibility tool tip, uh, toolbar will be um, in the same language. Um, they will even create, um, help you create your accessibility statement um, and so on and so forth. So there's um, all those other things that you can configure for this um, little widget, especially if you get the paid subscription, you can configure all the um, AI functions. 
So, so that's pretty much it about the little widget. Um, so all the links um, I can share as well. So um, that Cartman little um, escape room promotion that started it all with um, a bit of um, um, WordPress. Um, and so we had Amnesty International and uh, yeah, so they do have um, a Joomla, a bit of a little guide, guidelines on how to implement uh, their accessibility um, widget in Joomla as well. So that's really handy. Yeah, they have it for Drupal and for everything else. Uh, what else do we have? Um, and uh, yeah, so I just ran quick accessibility um, tools in some in different um, CMSs. As I said, um, it doesn't come um, with accessibility out. Like maybe it comes with 100% accessibility out of the box. But once you start working and uh, changing things. Um, customizing the website, doing your own theming, then it's all um, changes and then you need to retest it. So for example, my hcare.gov.au is a Drupal website, GovCMS. So they were working really, really hard on accessibility because it's, um, it's a government website and also it's targeted audience uh, might have, um, um, some accessibility issues as well. Um, so this is a Drupal website. So White House um, with the new president is actually um, accessibility score is really high and they also have their little uh, contrasty um, filter and uh, larger font size filters. Um, it, um, I think um, with the previous president, the whitehouse.gov wasn't that accessible. They didn't really care much. Um, and um, so this is my little blog about accessibility audit tools. And I just inserted this um, user way um, accessibility widget um, on my blog as well. So it's, it's pretty easy to do. So, and uh, yeah, and uh, I looked at the Joomla's um, um, accessibility widgets uh, when you can um, download the extensions and all things like that. So have a look, maybe something will also be suitable. Some of them are paid for and um, um, some of them are free and some of them more for testing and some of them maybe actually can be used in a similar way. So it's worth checking out in um, accessibility area of um, joomla.org. So yeah, we have a Lighthouse score of 89, which is not too bad. And it's mainly just the um, colors that are not um, contrasty enough and some label issues. But yeah, this is only 30% of, um, of the tests. Uh, yeah, so thank you for listening. I hope um, it was useful. Uh, have you got any questions? Um, I have a question about, uh, question generally Jana, speaking, um, the font sizes. So there the, on the on the special on, features you know, of this which is the option to size up or size um, down. But is, the, is there any noticeable slowdown of the websites by using the accessibility uh, plugin widget? Oh, we have two questions <laughs> at a time. Uh, so slow down. Can you mute? So yes, Stuart asks yours again, because Mick was asking one at the same time. Yeah, so uh, one question is from here, uh, from the audience in the room. Um, so is there a slowdown? So I haven't noticed the slowdown as the JavaScript loads 
Um, let's see. Uh, in uh, in the JavaScript itself, so it just loads the script, and um, it doesn't really do anything besides then it just manipulates your DOM when a user interacts with it. So it doesn't um, it doesn't do anything upfront. At least the free one, the paid one, maybe will go through your uh, images that check that the images have uh, alt tags or things like that. But the free one that doesn't really do much. It just loads on the background and it just sits in there and uh, that's all. So I haven't seen, I haven't noticed any slowdowns or, um, or issues in terms of um, that it might be um, um, sort of interacting or um, the CSS or layout somehow might get screwed up with it. Um, yeah, um, I haven't noticed that. All right, what's the other question? My question was, I was just thinking about how um, on my browsers, if I just do control plus and control minus to increase the font sizes and things. And I was thinking to myself, why do we need this extra feature if browsers typically already have this baked in? And then I was thinking maybe this is a mobile friendly offering and, but then don't you just uh, spread or pinch when you want the sizing to be different? What's, what's the uh, real value add for people uh, for font resizing? For font resizing. Um, I guess if, if you don't have access to the keyboard, if you just have, um, like for example, Amnesty International is a good example. Uh, when you don't have, if, if, that, if you have some sort of broken computer, but you need to get <laughs> to, the, to this lawyer, um, it's, yeah, it's a question of like, oh, but wouldn't you have your own setup? Um, if, if you do have some accessibility issues, wouldn't you have your own setup uh, to do all those and you'll have a screen reader and things like that? Um, it's, uh, yes, um, you probably would, um, but like according to these companies and feedback, what people provide to them, uh, it really improved um, people's um, uh, experience of the web because some people don't even know that there is a control plus. Like I see all the time um, people who like with uh, elderly or with visual issues, they take a looking glass and they put it in front of the um, phone. Although phone has... Apple uh, and, and Android, they have really awesome accessibility features where you can have your own look and go, um, your own zooms, like little zooms and yeah. So, but people don't know about those. Uh, there are like even infinite blogs and vlogs about how to use your phone accessibly if you have any sort of issues, but some people might not know about it and they just like, look at the phone with, <laughs> uh, with the looking glass. Yeah. yeah, and I can't deny, I mean, it, I think it very much makes sense to, to be in the suite of offerings, that it's, it's very much about the color, the shape, the size, like it just belongs. So even if it's perhaps one of the lowest value things that they offer, it certainly, mm. I, I think it belongs, yeah. Yeah, and like we, when we, we might not have the disability and, but some person with a, um, with a disability might find that it's like, oh yeah, this is something that's easy to use rather than to use the keyboard to increase um, the size that might tap to it or things like that. So, yeah. Um, um, just, just another piece. Sorry, was that Nathan? Go ahead. I was just going to ask, do you happen to know if they um, do discounts on pricing for not-for-profits? 
Uh, I think there should be. Most uh, companies do have. Um, I had heard of a look. It didn't say. It sort of says contact us. So. Mm, yeah, usually they do. They do that. So um, they like to talk to people. It's. Uh... Sure. Thanks. Cool. <coughs> There's a, thing, there's a thing in the footer about NFPs and uh, not for profits and NGOs, um, and just goes to a page where it kind of says, you know, get in contact with talking about talk, uh, working with us. Mm. Um, I was just going to chime in to say that I think this is a real uh, point of growth for Joomla and for web developers in general. I think there's a a really steep learning curve and a lot of um, man hours that are going to have to go into this across the world um, to get things much more accessible. Um, embarrassingly, perhaps, uh, Joomla Stack Exchange had its very first question relating to accessibility 16 days ago. And that the person who asked the question said, can someone please put an accessibility tag, like create one? because they didn't have the privilege to create the tag. So it's a bit sad that we're only just getting on the bandwagon, but uh, yeah, I expect, and, and if anyone has questions along the way, I hope that you will post uh, a bit more content regarding accessibility and things that you find within the CMS, because um, the sooner, the, the more we inform each other, the easier it will be to uh, make better websites and to help people uh, enjoy their user experience. Yeah, it's um, as simple as going through the accessibility checklist and um, for, I guess, the core development um, team and trying to look what they can put into the core. So, for example, Drupal has skip navigation uh, in the core. So when you um, try to tab, here you go, it says skip main content. But I think this skip main content, skip to main content is actually from uh, accessibility um, widget. So if you would install it on uh, any Joomla website that will try to get to the, um, to that, uh, to the content as well. Um, in Drupal, uh, so will, um, I'm in developer mode, so um, I don't know how to, where it can be. Anyway, so like this thing is in the core. So if you uh, just create an issue for it, because yeah, it's not in um, like even in here in the joomla.org. So I just collect those issues under accessibility banner and um, start implementing them. No more questions. All right, thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. That's um, yeah, some of you are going to the regular kit of many um, users, I think, going forward. Um, I know we're just, just scanning the room there, um, this project I'm working on with Matthew Meehan at the moment, that uh, um, that widget would um, be a very suitable solution for uh, an enhancement on, on that site. And Colin, that's probably something to look at on the concert site. So um, have more of a conversation there later on those. Um, so thank you very much, Vlad and, and Jenna, for uh, for that. It's uh, it's been an interesting evening.